Let Jesus create. Let Jesus lead you in worship personally, okay? Uh, your family, let him lead your family in worship. He'll give you creative ideas. One thing we used to do with our kids is we get out a flashlight and we had a nice white wall and we turn the lights off. And when they were little, we had four children, uh, two boys and two girls, and we turn on a, a CD. You know, sometimes we liked Paul Wilbur, you know, because he was really danceable and stuff. And so we put on that, that CD, and they go for the whole hour because we were doing strobe light flashlight against the wall, and they just worship God, you know, and they do cool things like this. And, and that's, this is when they're like three, four, you know, five, six years old. They're, they're just worshiping. And uh, God, God will lead you. Jesus will lead you. In your home, he'll lead you personally in, in your ministry of worship to him. In your church, uh, he'll lead you. Don't make the mistake I made where... He was giving me a revelation one time. I remember it. I was uh, just out of college. And my brother had left the church. It was a bad situation, kind of where, you know, I wasn't even supposed to talk to him kind of thing because it was one of those kind of church splits. And I, I still talk to him about it because he was my brother. But um, I took over the worship because he was the worship leader. And one of the first few times I was leading, I was getting such a revelation that we need to do what we're singing. Like if, if we're singing, you know, come let us worship and bow down. You know, we should bow down. We should really do this. We should worship and bow down. And then lift our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. We should lift our hands and we should do this. Every time we say something to make it real in our hearts, we should be doing it with our bodies. And I was getting really zealous about this. And I got up to lead worship. And can you guess what happened? I told them all to do everything, every time. It was like, we'd be singing, and I, I crafted my list with songs that were like, you know, a bowing song, and a clapping song, and a dancing song, and, and I plugged them all into my recipe, and I put it in the oven, and out came Control Freak, and it was just terrible. It was, and I'm sitting on this old, you know, white elephant piano, just leading this worship and saying, let's, let's all bow now. Right when we sing this, you know. <laughs> Come on, this is what we're singing. we got to do it, you know. Good thing it was a bunch of college students mostly. They, you know, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Lift our hands. What were we doing next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they were trying to keep up with me. But afterwards, the pastor, who's a nice guy, said, you might want to leave room for, you know, the Holy Spirit to, you know, interpret what you're... I appreciate your revelation, brother, you know. <laughs> okay. So he'll lead you. You don't have to, you know, figure it all out. He'll be faithful to lead you in the everlasting way. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite stories is Garrett Gustafson, who started Integrity Music, okay, started basically the whole thing, uh, went to India with the Give Thanks tape, which was the biggest tape, you know, selling of all time at that time. And he went to Mother Teresa, in India, on a missions trip. And he's bringing integrity music, which has traveled around the world by this time, to her. And you know what she did? She looked at him and said, thank you, brother, but we don't have any tape players, you know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have cassette recorders in our missions. And we, we can't use this. And he put the tape back up and he says, well, what's your definition of worship? And she says, oh, that's easy. Whatsoever you do to the least of these, my brother, and you have done it unto me. She said, I worship all the time, every day. Isn't that great? Yeah. She's great. Okay, what would it look like to have Jesus lead our worship services? Well, by what we just saw, it might look kind of interesting. Okay, it boils down to letting him both give you this, the word and the way. Wait for both, leave room for him as you're going along. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Just acknowledge him. In everything that you're doing, and he'll be faithful. The Spirit of God will let you know if he's not, if Jesus is not being magnified and glorified. Any brothers and sisters you want to, and your pastor, and your wife, and your kids, you know, praise the Lord for all of them. I know he is truly the head of the body, and he should have first place in all things. 
When things seem to be falling apart, remember, he holds all things together by the word of his power. He is able to keep it going. Jesus led worship perfectly because he only saw, he only did what he saw the Father doing. He only spoke what he heard him say. A high calling, yes, but the same is true for all believers. And everything I've said up to this point comes to this. I have a secret for you. All believers are worship leaders. We in America and in other places have put this pedestal up for this ministry. And God never intended it. It's not a higher calling. I grew up in comparison, just like everybody. It's a habit. But we got to remember, it's all subjective. It's all according to our own experience and our own lenses. And so we can never truly judge what's happening in worship. Only God can do that. Because He's the one who sees the heart. We look at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. So it's silly to compare and to judge what's going on in the worship service. The only way out of this trap is to look at Jesus, and that's what he's been doing with me. And let him take joy in leading you through the gifts that he has given you. You just happen to be worship leaders that have singing ability or playing ability. All the rest of the people in the congregation are just worship leaders that have other abilities to do. Uh, he is the great high priest, and he will lead you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to tell you one last thing that we're going to say. A um, long time ago, God told me, don't put all your eggs in the Sunday basket. Don't let your worship leadership become your focus so that you'll stay holy through the week just so you can lead worship on Sunday. And when you're not leading worship, you can be a little less holy. You ever have that lie come to you? Oh, I'm not leading worship this week, so I can do this this week. Anybody else have that happen to you? Don't. That's the trap we fall in when we prepare so much for Sunday and make that our big thing, and then get up on our, you know, pedestal and do it. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm not saying you guys are all doing that. I know that it's happened to me though. I will sing to the Lord all of my life, David said. For as long as I live, I will praise my God. The early church had this revelation of Jesus as the head in a real way. Philippians 2, and if you could, turn to Philippians 2, verse 5. And I wrote a song to this. And I wonder if it isn't the song that Paul and Silas, you know, were singing in the jail too that he quoted here. But this is a song of the early church hidden right in the middle of the book of Philippians. And it starts off with Jesus, you know, in very nature God. He did not regard himself. Uh, equality with God is something to be held on to. But he emptied himself. He humbled himself, becoming obedient even to the point of death on a cross. They understood that he was the head of the church also, but that he had performed the greatest worship act ever, and they should write a song about it. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave to him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is the Lord. That was their song. That was one of their great hits of the early church. 